So, this uh, this we have seen this is actually schematic diagram and this is that reduced block diagram of the governor only this turbine generator will later and this is figure 8 right. So, it is, it is actually governor with load reference control this one for adjusting frequency load relationship right. So, ultimately it is you huh? and this already I have showed you how to make it. So, once after this uh, write up is here, but after this suppose you have a uh, suppose you have three units right and this is something that uh, if it is a this thing your what you call this uh, 50 hertz system say. So, suppose there are your this uh, three different uh, dupe characteristics are there right three different generating units and dupe characteristics. Suppose it was operating that if for this is for A, this is another unit for B, this is another for C something like this right. So, from the practical point of view the adjustment of load difference set point is accomplished by operating the speed changer motor. Uh, figure 9 this one shows the effect of this adjustment. Family of parallel characteristic as shown in figure 9 for different speed changer motor setting right. Suppose uh, this is your this side is frequency in hertz and suppose this effect of speed changer setting on governor characteristic. Suppose when it is speed change uh, your this thing, this thing is your 50 hertz when it is 50 hertz you look at that for A the generation is 0 right because you draw an horizontal line horizontal line then for it is starting from here. So, for A it is 0 for B it is say 50 percent something some special case is taken and for C say it is 100 percent and it is given 3 hertz is equal to 60 percent is a 50 hertz system say. So, that is why it is 1 hertz is equal to 2 pi or 2 percent right. So, this is and this is the percent power output. So, that means the characteristic shown in figure 9 associated with 50 hertz system three characteristic are shown representing three load difference setting at 50 hertz the characteristic a result is 0 output because at I told you that it is starting from here at 50 hertz it is resulting 0 output right characteristic b it results 50 percent output I told you and for characteristic C there is 100 percent output. So, therefore, by adjusting the load difference setting that is u right through actuation of the speed changer motor the power output generated unit at a you know at a desired level I mean uh, this thing can be changed right at a given speed may be adjusted to any desired value. For each setting the speed load characteristic has a 6 percent droop that is a speed change of 6 percent is 3 hertz causes actually 100 percent change in power output. So, this is actually for this case suppose if it is a dupe setting is 6 percent right. So, that means it is changing is 100 uh, your what you call that is your uh, 100 percent that means uh, uh, that is full load that is the power output and if it is a 6 percent means if it is a 50 hertz system then 6 percent full load means 3 hertz right. If it is a 4 percent then it will be too hard and like that right. So, that is that that is the that is your idea of the speed loop uh, characteristic right. After this that is as we have to for the sake of completeness of the total uh, block diagram representation we will take turbine model uh, we will take uh, uh, as, as this thing uh, the your read or non read type uh, turbine, but uh, you will see things are understanding, but it is only you for the sake of completeness rather than taking the block diagram I thought little bit I will tell you here. Next is the turbine model and after that generator model right. So, all compound steam turbine systems actually utilize governor control valves at the inlet uh, right to the high pressure or very high pressure turbine because uh, turbine has different type of high pressure intermediate pressure and low, uh, low pressure uh, uh, section right. So, in that case so, you have to uh, what we will do we will try to represent them in the Laplace transform and black block diagram representation. So, so, so turbine that your uh, uh, and uh, valve mechanism for the steam turbine say uh, you have uh, different uh, sections right, but here for the simplicity we will take the simplest model detail we will not consider right to, uh, st because you need this uh, one to for the your controlling the steam flow the steam chest and the inlet piping uh, to the steam turbine cylinder and reheater right uh, cro and crossover piping down downstream all introduce delays between valve movement and change in steam flow. Actually everything every system if you take here it is delay. For example, uh, while, I, while I am sitting here recording this thing 
when I am moving this pen here or my finger here, I can observe in front of me that some fact very although this thing is very very small or negligible, but I can uh, see some delay is there for transferring my voice or transferring my this movement, right? I can I can I can sense it from sitting here. Similarly, when when suppose you take a hundred meter, you know, what you call that one meter pipe and from one end you put water another side maybe with high speed does not matter another side it will take some time because some delay will be there to reach there. So, that is why that uh, suppose uh, for steam turbine also now look at this that uh, it is you have, you have a boiler boiler system boiler dynamics is very slow. So, we will not consider that thing in load frequency control it is very slow right. Then this is a non and there will be different uh, type of your what you call uh, valve mechanism is there not not one stage or uh, two stage maybe few more right from the precautionary point of view and other activities. But here we will show one you call MSB and another we call CV. MSB is given actually it is the main inlet stop valves right. This is the MSB and CV is the modulate the steam flow during normal operation right. So, uh, so the, those things your what you call that uh, this uh, this is called control valve CV right and MSB is a main inlet stop valve. So, there are two things are taking MSB and CV right. So, when water will steam flow will be there uh, through this valve mechanism and your high pressure section then crossover then low pressure uh, of the uh, this thing then this is a sap and this is a generator this is a condenser right. So, everything some delay is associated with that right from here to here if it reaches some delay will be there that means you have to represent this by some time constant right similarly crossover also. So, some some time constant we can represent right. So, that is and when it is single reheat steam turbine when reheater is there right. So, in that case this is a reheater if reheater is there only in between only in between your this uh, what you call this high pressure then in, uh, because of reheater then inter pressure, intermediate pressure is there. So, this is MSB CV all nomenclature is here it is there RSB also that reheater stop valve. So, here it is uh, your and it is intercept your intercept valve IV here it is there the nomenclature this is intercept valve and this is reheater stop valve right. So, from this process when teams coming all this process some delay is associated with that and according to the power output right. So, from that we have to from this only you have to make the block diagram representation or control system representation. So, question is that if delay is associated with that uh, for whole thing and second thing is that every every section high pressure intermediate pressure LP that some fraction of power is generated and total will be say 1 we will assume that it is a lossless turbine we will assume that it is a totally lossless right. So, this is actually single uh, steam turbine. So, this is high pressure side this is intermediate side this is sap this dash line is a sap this is low pressure side this is condenser condenser will not come into our modeling right and then generator will come later. So, but this one this one the reheater then crossover pipe piping. So, all sub things will come in the your what you call in the mathematical model right in the transfer function model. So, how how will how will make this because we have to link governor turbine generator everything such that a closed loop system is uh, form right. So, basically it is a closed loop system. So, if you if you make this whole thing as a block diagram representation it will be approximate linear model for tandem compound single digital which is a linear model. So, from the from here to here when steam is uh, your uh, flowing right some delay will be associated with that that is actually represented by this is input because governor output whatever it was coming right from the output of the governor it is coming to the turbine the previously I showed you know that block diagram this delta E right this is your what you call that uh, that uh, diagram that your here this is delta E this is the delta E this output of the governor right and this is going to your what you call that your turbine then generator right. So, every everything is a, it is a it is a linked right. So, this is here it is output here it is delta E, but there it will be input to the turbine. So, that is why uh, that is why here that is why here it is input to the turbine and this is T T is a steam chase time constant we call later I think I have given this parameter the steam chase time constant this power will come later after that you have a reheater you have a reheater right here also you can represent it by some delay this is reheater. So, this is actually you can represent any delay you can represent 1 upon 1 plus STR 
that is your e time constant and then you have this crossover right this crossover is there. So, there you can make 1 upon 1 plus s t c the 3 time constant t t t r and t c right the 3 time constant where t c is t c is very small we neglect that and t r the heat at time constant if for heat turbine it is higher than t t t t is some range is there in between 0.2 to 0.5 second or so, but t r is at approximately say it is 10 second or so right and this is the fraction of power generated in the high pressure side and then intermediate side and this is the low pressure and this is total delta p this delta p g that means your in the your high pressure plus intermediate pressure this is the high pressure side this is intermediate side and this is the low pressure right section of the turbine. So, suppose this is a p h p the fraction of power generated then this is a pi p from intermediate pressure because this is your steam chest everything is coming here some power will be generated from a your from intermediate pressure also it will come up because after after reheater the, this section is coming after reheater this section is coming right and therefore, it is your 1 plus s t and then it is f i p right intermediate pressure whatever fraction of power generated and this is your 1 upon 1 plus s t c this is crossover time constant right and after that l p side is coming. So, this is your f l p right. So, f h p plus f h p plus f l p this actually together is equal to 1 if we assume lossless right this 3 should be 1, but if you neglect this neglect this uh, time constant T c. So, basically in that case we will find F i p plus F l p will be 1 minus F h p and that way will come right. So, this is approximate linear model for tandem compound single D steam turbine. I believe this schematic thing you have understood and if the reheater is not there later we will see if reheater is not there only that uh, only that a non reheat type turbine uh, this thing if this kind of model is there say non reheat type turbine if reheater is not there then this term will not be there this term also will be not be not be there only this time constant it can be represented later we will see right. So, that means that means if you that means if we assume that this time constant is your uh, what you call neglected this time constant is neglected. So, just uh, just hold on. Mm, before uh, before showing this diagram, before showing this uh, before showing this uh, approximation, just have a look here, right? That figure ten a I shows a schematically diagram of tandem compound single D steam turbine, and figure this is actually figure ten a that is the schematic one, and this is actually your figure ten b figure ten b whatever I showed, right? And this figure ten b actually shows the linear transfer function model of the tandem compound single reheat turbine right. The time constant T, 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 R and T c represent delays due to steam chest and inlet piping I mean everything has some delays right. Uh, uh, for example, suppose if you make your friend angry some some of your friend will react very quickly. So, that is his, uh, his uh, reaction time is very fast and some of you will react in some time some delay will be there. So, every physical system or in real life also some delay will be associated with that right. So, the time constant T, T, T R and T C represent delays due this T, T you call steam chest time constant T hot T your what you call your uh, T R that is your uh, your uh, your what you call the reheater time constant and the T C is crossover piping respectively, but uh, the fraction of power that F H P, F, F, F I P and F L P represent portion of the total turbine power developed in the high pressure, intermediate pressure and low pressure cylinders right. So, in the that, that I told you this high pressure, intermediate pressure and low pressure this power fraction of power developed in the cylinders of the turbine. So, it may be noted that F H P plus F I P plus F L P is 1 assuming they are lossless. So, all together it should be 1. So, but time delay in crossover piping T C being small as compared to other time constant is neglected. So, this time constant T C is very small right maybe 0 0.01 0 0.02 something like that very small. So, this term is neglected T T range it will be in 0 0.2 and your what you call say point in between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 seconds T R also in about 10 15 seconds it is very uh, high value. So, compared to that this one we can neglect if you neglect this one if you neglect this T C right the time constant if you neglect right then the reduced transfer transfer function model is given in figure 10 c this is 10 c because f h p uh, plus f i p plus f l p is 1 right this one actually f h p plus 
f l p that is high pressure cylinder low pressure cylinder uh, sorry f i p first then f uh, your l p is equal to 1.0 right. So, this is one, but these two together your f i p plus f l p is equal to 1 minus f h p right this is the thing. So, that means intermediate pressure fraction of power developed in the intermediate pressure and low pressure cylinders is equal to 1 minus the power developed in the high pressure cylinder right, but we are neglecting T c we are neglecting this uh, just hold on neglecting this T c value the time constant will be uh, neglected if it is neglected it will become f i p plus f l p that is nothing but 1 minus f h p and that is why we are putting that this one is f h p this is 1 plus s t r immediately after that it is 1 minus f h p r and output is p g delta p g and this is delta e right. So, this is reduced order model for tandem compound single re steam turbine neglecting T c that crossover piping time constant is neglected once this is done once this is done right and this is I told you this is 1 minus f h p. So, from figure 10 c right from figure 10 c you make the transfer function just make it the delta p g upon delta p will be how much right. So, delta p g this delta p g this is delta e into 1 plus s t t into f h p will go this side and here also 1 plus s t r into 1 minus f p h that is equal to delta p g summation of these two this one plus this one is equal to delta p g. So, we are writing delta p g is equal to 1 upon 1 plus s t t it is going to here also it is multiplied here also both right. So, this is keep it outside that is 1 plus s t t this is kept, kept 1 upon 1 plus s t t in bracket into this is f h p is coming here right f h p is coming here plus 1 minus f h p into this one plus 1 minus f h p into 1 upon s plus t r that is 1 minus f h p upon 1 plus s t r into delta e right because this delta e will be there because this delta this delta e is multiplied by this. So, after that this is going here and this is going here right. So, in that case this is and then you simplify and try to simplify and try to find out what is delta p g upon delta p right. So, this is understandable from very preliminary thing of the block diagram transfer function from your third year control system right. So, that means delta p g upon delta e right delta p g upon uh, delta p g upon delta e is equal to if you simplify it will be 1 plus s k r t r upon 1 plus s t t 1 plus uh, into 1 plus s t r right. So, k r that uh, here k r is not mentioned, but I will I will put it that what is k r right where k r is read coefficient right it is called read that is the fraction of the power generated in the high pressure cylinder that is k r is equal to actually f h p right. So, for non read turbine f h p is 1. So, k r will be 1 that actually this is the k r we represent actually it is k r nothing but a your f h p that k r is equal to f h p right this much only. So, we represent that is uh, for power representation we make it that k r is read coefficient that is the fraction of the power generated in the high pressure cylinder. So, for non read turbine f h p is 1 because for non read turbine uh, your what you call for non read turbine that is uh, your uh, read r was not there. So, in that case your k r is k r is equal to 1 k r is equal to f h p k r is 1 if k r is 1 then this term and this term will be cancelled if k r is 1 because it will be then 1 plus s t r 1 plus s t r in the case of non read turbine then it will be your 1 upon 1 plus s t t only right. Uh, so, that is this is equation 5 right. So, the, that is the or that is the part that that means for the non read turbine model that is given as it is given as delta p g upon delta e is equal to 1 upon 1 plus s t t it is equation 6 right. So, this is actually uh, turbine model. So, we got del, uh, uh, that is delta p g that means we related delta p g and delta e if it is a non read turbine it is 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus s t t if it is your what you call read turbine it is 1 plus s k r t r upon 1 plus s t t into 1 plus s t r k r is nothing but the fraction of power generated in the high pressure cylinder right. Uh, so, this is your we call reheat coefficient right. So, up to this it is ok. So, uh, the, so delta p g is equal to your delta e upon 1 plus s t t right that means delta p is equal to delta e upon 1 plus t because we have to relate 
one section to one part to another part using different uh, your uh, this uh, block diagram in the Laplace transform. But here not putting delta p g s upon delta p e s that function of s it is understandable that is why throughout this that I have tried to avoid. Next is generator load model. Next you have to make is then generator load, load also you have to model with frequency then only your block diagram representation will be complete right. So, increment in power input to the generator load system is delta p g minus delta p l. Suppose, uh, suppose, uh, uh, suppose generator was generating uh, generator was generating your uh, 200 megawatt power in the system. Suppose, load demand has increased from 200 to say uh, 210. So, 10 megawatt increases there. So, there is a change in load say delta p l that is this one is 10 megawatt. So, uh, that means, additional power generation from generator it has to be 10 megawatt such that, that there will be balance. So, as soon as 10 megawatt is generated and generator the change in generating power from 200 of course, it is delta p g minus delta p l, but instantaneously generator cannot generate the 10 megawatt it will take some time. So, if it is so that there will be a, there will be a transient imbalance between the generation and the load right because this delta p g is equal to delta p l it will take some time right. So, but this has this is already 10 megawatt and slowly and slowly it is catching up this delta p g will catch to this one, but uh, unless and until steady steady reach there is a transient imbalance because difference will be there between delta p g and minus delta p l. So, if it, if it is that means and we are writing where delta p g to delta p t is equal to incremental incremental uh, your uh, turbine power output in power unit system we are assuming the power generated by the generator and the turbine it is same and assuming that a turbine is a lossless turbine right. So, and another thing is there that is not here that is in power unit system that uh, your what you call that turbine that generator power output uh, and torque it is actually same in power unit, but those are beyond the scope those are beyond the scope, but here that delta p g is equal to delta p t we have taken because assuming there is a lossless uh, turbine there is incremental turbine power output assuming generator incremental loss is negligible that is lossless and delta p l is the load increment. So, in that case this delta p g and delta p t both will remain same right. So, due to this transient imbalance what can happen the look that that is because of that it is only transient imbalance. So, in steady steady reached then delta p g is equal to delta p l, but whatever we are discussing here the test steady state is not reached it is transient imbalance is there. So, that is accumulated in two ways suppose first one is rate of increase of stored kinetic energy in the generator rotor right that is that is the at, C, at schedule frequency f 0 the store energy is w k 0 is equal to h into p r uh, that is that kinetic energy we when you express this we have written I think in the previous course. Uh, in transient uh, stability studies I think we have seen this one. So, H is the inertia that we have seen and P r is the rated capacity of the machine. Therefore, initially that uh, you are what you call at system frequency f 0 that is energy stored is w k e and this is superscript 0 is equal to H into P r that is megawatt second, because H is in second right is that uh, your inertia that we have studied in transient stability. Uh, in the previous course power system analysis and PR say is the rated capacity of the generator in megawatt. So, its product is your megawatt second that we represent this is your stored energy in the system. This is say equation 7, where PR is the rated capacity of turbo generator that is megawatt and H is inertia constant in second right this way you write the stored kinetic energy. Next is that this kinetic energy is proportional to the square of the speed because you, you you know that k k is proportional to the square of the speed right. So, in that case where that and omega is related to your frequency omega to related to frequency therefore, kinetic energy at a frequency f 0 plus delta because due to this change in load that due to this change in load right the frequency speed will change although it will not lose synchronism, but some change will be there. So, in that case the difference will be there that will frequency will not be exactly f 0 it will deviate it will be say f 0 plus delta f. So, that is why the kinetic energy at a frequency when that load is part that is a load perturbation right at that time frequency is f 0 plus delta f. Now, as kinetic energy is proportional to the square of the speed right. So, 
initially it, this can be written as w k e that w k e 0 into f 0 plus delta f square upon your f 0 uh, square it is something like this actually the kinetic energy is proportional to the speed right that speed means that if it is omega just hold on in a separate seat I am writing for you right uh, because in general w is proportional to your omega square right w is proportional to omega square that means that is omega is actually proper your uh, 2 pi f that means w is actually proportional to f square so if kinetic energy say at nominal frequency this is proportional to f0 square and if load there is change in load right that means the frequency has changed in it was f0 F now f0 has changed to f0 plus delta f that means my wke is proportional to then your f0 plus delta f square right that means that means if you make it like this wke by wke 0 is equal to you can write that f0 plus delta f square divided by f0 square this you can write so that's what i have written wk is wk 0 f0 plus delta f square upon f0 square it is whole as written square that means it is the same thing whatever i have written here f0 plus delta f0 square now if you if you expand this if you expand this that means that means before exp expansion that is wke is equal to wke 0 into f0 plus delta f square upon f0 square this way you can write now if you expand it wke 0 that is your f0 square plus delta f square plus 2 f0 delta f divided by your f0 square this way you can write right so now question is that delta f square this delta f is very small so square is much smaller so this term you drop from this equation this you drop that means this one will be wke 0 in bracket i can write this is your f0 square plus 2 f0 into delta f divided by f0 square this way you can write that means this one wke 0 uh, divide f0 square numerator uh, this thing f0 square by f0 square 1 plus 2 f0 by f0 square means 2 f0 right into delta f right so that means it is your wke 0 1 plus 2 delta f upon f0 so same thing upon simplification this we are writing wke 0 wke 0 is equal to h into pr we have seen so here we have written wke 0 you write one more line wke 0 is equal to h into pr then 1 plus 2 delta f upon f0 right so whatever whatever we are writing here wke is equal to h pr 1 plus 2 f into delta f upon 0 right so now rate of change of energy is power so you take the derivative with respect to t of wke so d dt of wke is equal to if you take the derivative it will be 2 h pr upon f0 into d dt of delta f this is equation 8 right so h is a constant pr is a constant f0 is the nominal frequency only variable is delta f so it is d dt of delta ke is equal to 2 h pr upon f0 d dt upon delta f so this is your and this is one part that is the variation of your what you call delta pg minus delta pl and frequency is changing and accordingly you can make this equation that del d dt upon delta k is equal to 2 h pr upon f0 d dt of delta f this is equation 8 right thank you we will be back.